Hello everyone and welcome to this hotkey guide on AoE 4 hotkeys. We're going to talk about why hotkeys matter and how you can set them up properly to achieve a better result when playing. To find that you're not capped by your uh, mouse and keyboard setup and instead you're just spending more time on playing the game. I'm also going to include some tips and tricks you might not know about as well uh, on overriding control groups, proxy basing and lastly some practice tips and tools to build your hotkey muscle memory so stick around for that in the end of this video let's talk a little bit about why we need a good hotkey setup it is extremely important to set up your hotkeys correctly as early as possible in your area for endeavors and that goes for pretty much any game you play if you have a bad hotkey setup you'll find that it slows you down considerably if you have a good one then you have more time to think so I'm going to use my personal setup here as an example and talk about how the different settings matter, but you don't have to. My personal setup might not be the best for you, but you can take notes of how I've organized my camera and hotkey settings and then try it out for yourself and find what works. Remember, hotkeys are about freeing up action from your mouse. You want to have as many actions on your keyboard as it is a lot faster than clicking with the mouse. Accessing keys is a lot easier than if you have to point and click everything with your mouse. And so you can cut a lot of the delay from having to do that with your mouse by just having your hotkeys. If you're clicking on everything, you will find that it's limiting to your control of your game. And you want to spend as little time doing things and more time macroing and microing as that is the most important thing, especially if you also want to get better at something like decision making. It is therefore super important to free up that load through better hotkeys. Let's take a look at the settings and setup that I use for AOE 4. I'm running a glorious keyboard. This is the GMMMK 75% Pro. It has customized milky yellow Pro linear switches in it. And then I'm running GPBT keycaps, and these are the black ash one. And my mouse, I'm running Razer Viper Ultimate. I think this is a great mouse as well as fast. It's really nice. And uh, for my mouse pad, I'm running Infinity My Speed V2. As for the settings themselves, I'll start to go through them now, and then I'll use this to just show off the way that I position my hand and the different keys that we're talking about. So for the controls, I'm going to first take a look at the camera controls. A lot of the times the camera controls are highly personalized. So people find that camera controls can change things dramatically. A lot of the times the standard ones, these are not standard, by the way, the standard camera controls will find you every time you click a building, for example, you jump across the screen and you don't want that in my opinion. For me, I really like to be able to have more control over where I want my camera to go, as it's my main form of movement. And so I have all these as select only, so that whenever I'm clicking, for example, my town center, it just selects it so that it doesn't go back if I'm microing something and just want to queue bills whilst I'm fighting or something. Um, so I think this is a really smart way to set it up. A lot of these are select only, simply because I don't want to have my camera jumping everywhere. The idle villager one is not, it's center camera. So whenever I hit my idle villager hotkey, which is this one up here, which is super accessible, then it just jumps straight to those idle villagers and then I can quickly get them to do something. Here I'm running no sticky selection, no swap, shift and alt modifier keys, and no exclusive control groups. The reason I'm not running exclusive control groups is because I like to be able to share units between control groups. For example, scout on key three, and then cavalry on key four, and then the scout is in both of those groups, and then I can just quickly go forward with my scout and then have my cavalry stay back and then go in with the cavalry after I've scouted. Really smart way, in my opinion. The camera itself, I'm running no pan acceleration. I don't like to have a different um, feedback when I'm sc uh, screen pan um, scrolling. And so I really like to have no acceleration there. This is 80%. This is, of course, relative to your monitor and what you like. And then I run panoramic mode. This is also something you can just run standard or the classic one if you want to. The panoramic gives you more... Um, Vision, but if you're running a, a larger screen, you might want to run the uh, the classic one. Again, up to you. For game, I use team-based colors, so it's always the same colors in my game. If you're not running the same colors, then you might sometimes find that it can be difficult to distinguish between uh, what units are yours and what units aren't, and if there are even units on your minimap and stuff, because you can maybe see green units, and then the green units appear as bushes or something to you. And so I really recommend that you run team-based colors. I use the box select, drag, and then... Yeah, I don't think there's anything else here than attack move behavior being legacy so that I can actually attack move on units and use that to target fire whenever I don't whenever I'm stutter stepping stutter stepping with archers. For UI, I'm using always on for health bars. 
and construction progress bars. This is the one that's really important though, because you want to be able to always tell how many units you have in a group, how many units uh, are, are damaged, how many uh, have lost a lot of HP. So you can just tell, can you take this fight or not? Because the smart uh, health bars aren't really that smart. They will not always show up um, if your units are damaged. Then global build queue is show, as, as show all. This is good if you're not really good at missing making villagers and stuff, or if you want to check your upgrades. So if you're making units and stuff, you can just look at the left corner, and then it will always show you if you're producing. And then of course default minimap size. All right, let's take a look at the controls themselves. For the controls themselves, I have some of them standard, and a bunch of them are customized as well. So I'll go over some of the ones that I think are really important. For example, these here should be standard if I remember correctly. This is the cancel last item production queue. Really, really good if you want to remove villages from queue to try to optimize maybe an HF or something, or just free up some more food. This one removes everything. And you can see for me, it's very comfortable to just have my thumb on my spacebar. And then the tip of my thumb is on B and then can quickly go to M. And that's the way I manipulate um, the different queues. This one here, spacebar, it's in Danish. So this is just to focus on the last attack notification. If we go further down here, I just have M to change minimap size. This is good for team games sometimes. The unit selection itself, I am running select all units on the N key over here. And that's because this is not a, a key I want to hit. I don't have the select all units on screen. When I'm cycling through units, I'm using tap up here. And on my mouse four, I use the focus on selected units. I don't really use this key. I could honestly remove it if I want to. Then you can see that there's a bunch of these that I have removed, like select all villagers, idle villagers, and that's because I'm not really going to be using those keys. If I want to select all my villagers, I can just click select everything and then find my villagers and move them. But that's really, really rare that you want to do that. Maybe you want to do that in nomads or something. Then you have this key here, which looks a little bit weird, but this is just that one. So the one above tab here. So this is the one I use to quickly access my idle villagers. Let's go further down. You can see cycle through idle military units. I don't use this one. Select all idle military units is control C. So this is just a quick pinky set. And then control A to select all military units. And then control Q to select all naval. So you can see how this is just the same movement, but it's just a little bit different keys here. So it feels natural for me to always click control and then one of these keys up here to quickly access navy, all military units, or select all idle. Then I have pre-bound, and that doesn't mean I don't use control groups. I absolutely do. But I've pre-bound these to be one for select all military. So that's my key one here. So if I don't have anything in that control group, then this will select all melee infantry. And that's the same for ranged and cavalry on four and siege on three. So this is really smart. You can remove your control groups and then you can quickly access the different types simply by clicking on the keys after having removed the control group. Then I have caps lock. I use caps lock to access my monks and my shamans and prelates and so on. And this is really good if you just quickly want to go and get a prelate to grab a relic, for example. And with the camera settings, it's not going to go back to that prelate if it's in the Aachen Chapel or something. It's actually just going to grab it and then you can right click it and then go back. Control F, W, G and S is really good if you want to quickly grab villagers without having to go back to your base. You can simply be fighting. And let's say you're playing as English with Longbow Rush. You can then take Control F and then quickly gr grab a villager to go and build the tower. That's really smart, in my opinion, because you want to minimize the amount of movement with your camera. If you can use, if you can make your economy work without looking at it, that's a really, really good talent. Building selection. Let's take a look. I have F1 up here. I select all military production buildings. I don't really use it to navigate my different production buildings. I just use it to have a set um, rally point for everything. This is our eco buildings. I use this one when I cycle uh, the different upgrades. This is for tech. Same thing. And this is for landmarks. And this is very safe specific whenever I use this one. And then I have the ones uh, set up for my TC. And this one I think is quite important. So I'm going to go through the TC hotkey now. The TC hotkey I have customized in a very specific way where I can uh, access my TC by clicking key five. And it will always select all town centers. And that is because down here I have select all town centers. Now. I have also bound it so that my control groups can't overwrite this key. They can overwrite all the other keys, but not the town center one. So I've sort of split my keyboard in two. So from key five and this direction, this is all production buildings. And key five, this direction is all control groups. So this one is neutral. This cannot be bound as a control group, but all the other ones can. 
if I double click key five, then I will go and focus on the Capital Town Center like it says here. If I click key five once, then it'll just select all TCs and then I can queue up villages. On F5 here, I cycle through the different religious buildings. You want to have this as cycle through so that you can, for example, if you have two mosques, you can then use one mosque, right click a relic, and then you can go to another relic and you can then right click it with the other one. This is to cycle through the different keeps. If we go further down, I have select all town centers at five, barracks and six, seven is for archer ranges, stables is eight, nine is for siege workshops, and then zero is for markets. Control 5 selects all my keeps. So instead of making a control group with Control 5, I can then select all keeps and then I access my keeps. If you don't play Delhi, you don't need this key. I simply only have this key because my muscle memory is so heavily bound to this key 5 here that I cannot change it. So when I press Control 5, I access all my keeps and then I can use a villager fortress to make villages out of those keeps with the same movement as before, I just have to press control. So before I was experimenting with putting it at F7 or F6, that doesn't work for me. Control groups, I explained it a bit before, but basically everything is sort of normal here. I just cannot select control groups with key five. I cannot double click with key five and I cannot create new control groups with key five and I cannot add new units to a control group on key five. Very simple. I said before that I had pre-bound my different keys uh, for the production buildings. And this is a really smart way to set up your hotkeys because a lot of the times you want to be selecting your buildings when you're fighting and you don't want to go back. So with the camera settings that I had before, you will not go back, but you will select everything, right? You don't need to control group a single building. And that's why this hotkey setup is really smart. So six is for barracks, seven is for archer ranges, eight is for stables. Now, what if you don't want to produce out of the buildings that are in the back here? Let's say you have a proxy base somewhere far in the front. What you can do is you can make a control group out of these, and now they've overridden the other ones that are in the base, and then I can only select these right now. But the moment I unbind them by left-clicking the ground and using Control-6, now everything is selected again by that original hotkey. So it defaults again back to the pre-bound one. When we're talking about the town centers, I still select as Delhi by just clicking key 5. But if I'm using Control 5, I'm selecting the keeps. I want to explain a concept called unit cycling. This is a really, really good habit to have if you want to get better control over your camera positioning, your units, and not struggle with going back between your base and spending a lot of time trying to find where you should go on the minimap. You simply just want to use the double click on your control groups or your prebound groups or your TC, and then find a way to go there simply by using those keys. So what I'm explaining here is essentially just when you open up the game that you are using control groups and the pre-bound ones to go back and forth and then you're only doing minor dragging. So basically I can issue scout orders and then I can go back and forth like this. It might be a little bit disorienting at first if you're not used to it, but it's a really good habit to build if you want to minimize the amount of time you're spending on uh, moving around and gives you a lot more control. And when you start adding in more and more control groups, you'll find that it's a lot easier to use these simply by clicking the different keys for those control groups. So always use control groups. It's one of the best ways to build up speed in this game. If you don't do it, you're simply just not giving yourself a chance in this game if you want to improve and take this game seriously. This is one of the best tools that you can use to practice your hotkeys. If you simply use this tool for a few minutes before you start playing every single day, you will be able to build the uh, muscle memory that you need to access the construction menu and build stuff very, very quickly. So you'll see a lot of pro players that can just instantly build stuff. Yeah, that is practiced through a tool like this if you're not used to it. So basically what you do is you have a configuration here. You can select the different ages and then you can say, okay, I want to practice H1. And I want to practice with the standard sieves or with Byzantines or Delhi or Rus, whatever you prefer. And then you can have the keys slowly fade in. You can have them labeled already, or you can have blank keys. And so this is really good because you can also use different layouts. So if you are French, you can use the A30 keyboard. If you are uh, using the QWERTY, you can use that as well. There are a bunch of different ones here. And so all you have to do is just say exit, play again. And then what it'll do is it'll show you 
slowly what you need to press. And so you can start to practice this. And so if you're not very good at hotkeys, this is one of the best ways to practice them. So I really recommend this game. It even gives you a small analysis in the end. And so this is a, a great tool. So that's pretty much it. That is my personal hotkey setup. Again, you don't have to use the same hotkey setup that I have, but I would definitely encourage you to take inspiration and definitely start using hotkeys in the first place. So whether or not you're going to com completely copy my setup or if you're just going to take bits of it, that's completely up to you. And so everyone has their own style. Everyone has their different ways of playing the game. Just try to make a setup that works for you so that you're not using your mouse as much. That's it for me. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below and check out the links as well to the different sites that we've talked about today. Ultimately, um, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one.